well, you really uh, created something called the Nutritarian Diet, and it is primarily focused on a whole food plant-based diet, right? Some would call it a vegan diet, but you wouldn't necessarily call it a vegan diet. Can you talk about that? Right. I mean, particularly my interest is in reversing disease and making the um, putting forth the science and the clinical evidence that nobody has to have a heart attack or a stroke. We can reverse those illnesses, reverse diabetes, get them off people, off the medications, and even reverse autoimmune diseases like psoriasis and, and rheumatoid arthritis and Sjogren's syndromes and lupus is reversible. And I've spent my life aiding people in reversing those conditions. So we're talking about the diet style that's most favorably designed to slow the aging process, prevent disease, prevent cancer and dementia, and also reverse disease. So what I'm saying is the nutritarian diet is designed as where is the scientific evidence point that what portfolio of foods will allow people to age slowly, slowest as possible, live the longest, and then can you utilize that longevity promoting diet style as a therapeutic tool to reverse disease in people who may be sick and be suffering with various chronic conditions. And so that's predominantly what, what the nutritarian diet is about. And it's based on various principles. And one of the main principles is give to the most nutritional bang per caloric buck and have both a high level of nutrient exposure while at the same time having a broad diversity of exposure to a wide variety of nutrients that humans need, not leaving any particular um, whole open, making sure you have every nutrients humans need in the right amount. And with the, with the knowledge and the science to know that most Americans and most people in the modern world are ubiquitously and severely deficient in phytochemicals. And we're an animal with a high phytochemical requirement and exposure to the the density and variety of phytochemicals is the secret to slowing aging and preventing cancer. So there are a lot of health experts out there who would agree with you and a lot of others who don't agree with you. And I think this is the confusing part of the internet today is there is science that supports absolutely everything you say. And then there's science that people reference that uh, they say claims the opposite. So, what what I'm interested in, especially with this podcast and all the work that I do and the work I've done for almost two decades now, is really researching and understanding what is the truth, what is the diet, the lifestyle, the the most effective things we can do and ways we can live and eat that promote health and vitality and longevity uh, with the least amount of disease and the least amount of health problems possible, right? And I know that's been your focus for a very long time. So how do, how do you look at science of nutrition um, and why is what you're teaching controversial and compared to what maybe others are saying out there? Right. I mean, you have a lot of people that put forth their opinions, but I don't think that this scientific information is controversial among nutritional scientists and scholars in this field. In other words, people who spend their life studying the, the, um, the world's um, nutritional science literature and its complete um, availability and knowledge we've collected over the last 20 years. Um, we don't have much controversies among nutritional scientists, nutritional science meetings, you know, lifestyle medicine conferences, the World Health Organization meetings on nutrition. In other words, in the field of nutritional science, there's been less and less controversy and more coming together of knowledge with so much corroborating evidence so that we can grade evidence based on a grad, on a system of grading. And we know that, for example, that the most proven methodology to slow aging and extend human lifespan, and I want people to write down these five words because all the evidence points to this, and that, that is moderate caloric restriction because we know that being overweight shortens lifespan, even being 30 pounds overweight shortens lifespan. So moderate caloric restriction to maintain a, a low body mass and a low body fat mass. And we're talking here about maintaining your body fat below 25% if you're a female and below 15% if you're a male. So very clear and precise about that. In the context of nutritional excellence. So we're talking about achieving nutritional excellence without consuming excess calories. 
moderate caloric restriction, not severe caloric restriction, because severity of caloric restriction leading to anorexia could lead to nutritional deficiencies and low muscle and low body mass, and you know, we're taking things in your immune system too far. So that's the foundational principle there. And then we're talking about, we'll talk about other factors that adjust lifespan, but essentially we're looking at three categories of food here. One category is processed foods. And those are things like pasta, bread, salad oil, mayonnaise, donuts, cookies, crackers, rice cakes, breakfast bars, give us sources of calories without a significant micronutrient load. And the micronutrients do not contain calories like phytochemicals and antioxidants and vitamins and minerals are not calories, they're just nutrients. The calories are, the three calorie containing nutrients are fat, carbohydrate, and protein. And we know that most people shorten their lifespan because they're eating too many calories, too much fat, too much carbohydrate, and too much protein. So we're trying to people eat less fat, less carbohydrate, less protein, lower their macronutrients, and increase their micronutrients by eating foods that have a, a higher micronutrient density, particularly of phyto, phytochemicals. Thanks for listening to the Nathan Crane Podcast. If you found value in today's podcast, please share it with others. Subscribe to catch future episodes and leave a rating and a review. For more information or to connect with Nathan, check him out online at www.nathancrane.com and follow him on Facebook and YouTube at Nathan Crane. Until next time, this has been the Nathan Crane Podcast.